Okay, this is the first of the YouTube videos on confidence intervals. I will start with the um, most basic confidence interval, which is the confidence interval for a mean. So I've got a random sample of 30 volts. The sample mean weight is 5.4 grams, and the sample standard deviation is 0.4 grams. We're going to calculate a 95% confidence interval, a 99% confidence interval, and then we're going to have a look at a slightly different question. So the first thing you want to ask yourself when you look at these sort of problems is, are you given the sample standard deviation, or did you calculate the sample standard deviation, or are you given the population standard deviation? So if we look at the cheat sheet, the form is pretty much the same. You take the sample mean plus or minus some cutoff point, and then you put in the standard deviation and divide it by the square root of how many you've observed. The things that change between the two cases, if I'm given the population standard deviation, I use the population standard deviation at this point, and I use a z. If I have to either calculate the sample standard deviation, or I'm given the sample standard deviation, now I use that instead of sigma, so I've got an s here, and I now use a different thing, I use a t star. This is based on a t distribution, and unlike the normal, where there's just one standard normal I can use, the t distribution, I have to work out the degrees of freedom, which in this particular case is n minus 1. Using the standard rule of thumb, why is it n minus 1? Well, we have n observations, and then to do this, we've already calculated a sample mean, so we have to adjust it by 1 as a rough rule of thumb. Okay, so. Okay, so let's start with the 95% confidence interval for the mean weight. So, what we've been told, we know that n equals 30. Now that S equals 0.4, and we know that X bar equals 5.4. So the equation we're going to use is going to be X plus minus, well, we know the population, sorry, we know the sample standard deviation, so we're going to use a T star. And then we're going to have a fraction, it's going to be S divided by square root of N. Like that. So now we can just Put all the values in. So x bar is 5.4 plus minus. So we need to get t star. So how do we get t star? Well, if we look here, here's a t distribution, a bell shape of t distribution. And what we want is we want to find the values such that between minus t star and t star, because we've got 95% confidence interval, you're going to have this area is going to be 0.95. Now, we don't have that directly in MATLAB. Remember, MATLAB will just basically give us the ability to say, if I have this point and I give you a probability to the left, it can return the T star. So the question is, what value should we put into MATLAB? Well, we know this area plus this area plus this area comes to 1. We also know that this thing is symmetric. So if you've got a minus T star and a T star, this area to the left will always be the same as this area to the right. So we know that if the area in the middle is 0 0.95, this white area plus this white area must be 1 from. 1 take that, which is going to be 0 0.05. So finally, this area here must be 0 0.025. So let's put that in, 0.025. So that's going to be 0 0.025. And that one is also going to be 0.025. So now if we look at this T star, the area to the left of it is 0.95 plus 0.025. So altogether this area to the left of it is going to be 0.975. So if we go to MATLAB, we go T inverse, we get that 0.975. So now we need the degrees of freedom. So Go back to cheat sheet. We know that degrees of freedom in this case is going to be n minus 1. 
So we know that n equals 30, so the degrees of freedom is going to be 29. So 29. Roof rule of thumb. This value for 95% confidence interval when you got t should be round about 2. So if you get values that are very different from 2, you should just go and check the calculations again. So, let's put that in. Times, we've got s is 0.4 divided by square root of 30. Okay, so let's put that into MATLAB. So we've got 5.4, we'll do the minus sign first. We've got our t inverse. Uh, let's make it easy for myself. Let's call this t. So I've got 5.4 minus t times 0.4 divided by the square root of 30. Okay, 5.7, 5.2506. The right hand one will be the plus version. So we put that plus in there. We get 5.5494. So. Got that, comma. So to give the answer, I've put it in brackets. I've put the lower value on the left. And so we've now got our confidence interval. Now sometimes we're asked to interpret this, and interp interpretation is like this. So if we're asked to interpret this confidence interval, we'll do it this way. We start off with we are, and then whatever confidence interval you calculated, put that down. So in this case we calculated 95%, so we are 95% confident that. Then we talk about the parameter you're interested in. In this case we're looking at confidence interval for the mean weight. So it's the mean weight, tell us what we're looking at, which is bolts. So that the mean weight of bolts lies between, then I give the lower value and the upper value and then the units we measured in. Okay, that's it. So now let's look at the sec second question. So now on this one, we want a 99% confidence interval for the mean weight. So we still have n equals 30, s equals 0.4, x bar equals 5.4. The thing that's going to change is the t star. So let's go back to this diagram. So now in here, instead of 95, we're going to have 99. So again, this area plus this area must equal 1 minus this, which is 0 0.01. So therefore this must be 0.0, so I want 0 0.01 divided by 2 should be 0 0.5. And this will also be 0 0.005. So we've got this one is equal to this one, and these three should add up to 1. Let me just check the calculation right there. So I've got 0 0.005 plus 0.99 plus 0.005. So now if I want T star, I want the area to the left of this, which is going to be 0.99 plus 0.005, which is going to be 0.995. So I've got 0.99 plus 0.005, 0.995. So now I've got T inverse, 0.995. Views of freedom are still N, which is 30 minus 1, which gives us 29. So it's still closest to 2, but as you can see, slightly bigger number. If we increase our confidence, what we do, we often end up with a wider interval because we're going to cover ourselves by going wider to have more confidence. So we'll copy that. Now. We're going to do the same calculation, but now a different T star. Same calculation before, but making this change is this number. We now want this. So if I copy that, so you can see it's still the same calculation. So, go back to MATLAB. 
what I do is I will again call this, I call it T2, so I know that me T. If I just arrow up, I do minus T2, so there's the left, and there's the right. And notice as I said, we've gone from 95% confidence to 99% confidence, so we're more confident, and you'll find that the interval is now wider. We've gone from 5.2 to 5.5 to now 5.19 to 5.6. So the final form is the case where we're actually given the population standard deviation. So in this case, now we're given sigma, population standard deviation. So it's a very similar calculation. We still have the sample mean, we still have our standard deviation over our root n, but we have a different cutoff point. And um, instead of putting in sigma, we now put in, sorry, instead of putting in s, we now put in sigma. So we're going to have x minus, so now it's going to be z star, we're going to have sigma divided by the square root of n. So, sample mean, still 5.4. Z star. So if we go back to this diagram. Now we've got, got 0.95 of the 95% confidence interval. So this is going to be 0.025 and this one's going to be 0.025. The only difference is this, instead of being a t distribution, is now a standard normal. So now it's going to be an n01. But similar to before, you still find that it is symmetric and that the total area underneath adds to 1. If I drawn this to scale, you'd find the normal one would be a little bit sort of thinner in, while the t is a bit sort of what we call uh, wider or thicker in the edges. But anyway, we've still got the same 0 0.95, 0 0.025, 0 0.025. But now this will be minus z star. And this would be plus z star. Again, MATLAB won't give us this numbers directly. But what it will do is using norm inverse, it will give us the number such that the area to the left of this we can give. So the area to the left of z star is 0.95 plus 0.025 or 0.975. So I go norm inverse, 0.975. Don't need to give it degrees of freedom because there is any degrees of freedom for normal. And we get the 1.96. So now we've got 1.96. We're told the population standard deviation or sigma is 0.4, so same as before. And we've still got 30. So go back to MATLAB. R equals Z equals norm inverse 0.975. So we've got 5.4 minus z times 0.4 divided by the square root 30. And for the right, for the upper confidence, we have the plus. And 
there we are. Notice this slightly narrower than the 95% confidence interval when we had the sample standard deviation. That's because if you think about it, when you have the sample standard deviation, you have two unknowns. You have the mean weight and the standard deviation of the weight, which you're getting in both cases. So you have it slightly wider. When I give you one of the parameters, I give you the population standard deviation, you have one less unknown. Now the only unknown is the sample mean, and so this will often be a little bit narrower. As you can see, you have 1.96 here, and up here you have 2. Point. And that's the idea of the T distribution. It's taking into account that extra uncertainty when you don't know the population standard deviation. Okay, that's it. Goodbye.